Hey everyone, it's Book of Catherine. So I have so many slides for you, but the bottom line is that this is the one that's been most requested. And because of that, I'm just going to go ahead and do that one first instead of last. It's the shortest one, which is, in, in my opinion and in our experience and in the reading of the text, how can you be prepared for what's coming? The apocalypse, the judgment day, uh, heavens, pearly gates, whatever it may be, fires. Well, there's actually text. You can actually find out a lot of what it's actually going on around us now. If you read about what happened at Mount Sinai, God coming down, this is exactly what it looked like, thunder and flame anyway. But if you want to be ready for it, um, the end, as they say, talk to him. We left the Garden of Eden by choice. We said, you know what? There's only one rule we have here. We get to eat from the tree of life as much as we want. So we've lived for who knows how long eating from the tree of life, having it pretty good because there are zero laws but one. Don't eat that tree. Can you imagine the things that they did? They found cities that are hundreds of thousands of years old. And Adam and Eve, it says they built a city right after coming out. I mean, how did they know to build cities? They must have had an extravagant, amazing life because they got to sit and talk with God as well as do pretty much anything they wanted as long as they didn't eat that apple. So when we decided to eat that apple, we said, who did we decide to put our over us in our authority? Who did we decide to listen to and follow? And we decided to listen to the snake. And the father even said, eat that and you'll be dead. And that's what happened. Adam started to die. He was no longer with the tree of life. And that's something that we have to understand that was chosen, that we chose. It's a great thing to study. And essentially, the Lord gave Adam a promise that he would restore that relationship with us in 70. And instead of 70, we're at 7,000 years. And so it's up to us, in my opinion, and from what we've experienced, to say, you know what, we want to change our authority back from say, who doesn't, who only lies to us, the father of lies, um, to truth. You know, we seek truth all the time. If you're a truth seeker, you're going to love this. So basically, a, a lot of us now, at our own timing at totally different times, have taken the time to sit down and be quiet and say hello. Because it's up to us to do it. It's up to us to say hello and then some of us hear an answer right away. And then some of us hear an answer a long time. I know one of us had, wait, was it a day and a half, two days? And then after that, they go on talking and they all hear like, they all have radical experiences after that. And they're all told very different things to do. None of us are told to do the same thing. And it's not this whole go out and preach the gospel thing, which isn't this great commission thing. From what I've seen, isn't actually a real thing. Jesus just says, it will be preached in all the nations. But that's why he says, vengeance is mine. And Peter says, leave the opposition to themselves. It's not up to anyone who's talking to the Lord to go do the fighting for him. It's up to us to enjoy having that relationship with him and talking with him. And when you start reading the prophets, you realize that's what David did. He talked to God all the time. That's what the Psalms are. Daniel got to see, a number of the prophets actually got to see God's court and see God's throne room, which always kind of makes me cry now. Um, and the more you talk with him, the more you'll start to relate to these prophets who were on a one-on-one -on -one basis. They were essentially back in the Garden of Eden in many ways, able to talk with the Lord when they want to. And some days I even get down to like being like, what do I eat for lunch? <laughs> I can get really, really detailed. But it's like coming back, it's like I didn't have parents. I had to let my parents go. They're so abusive. 
And it took so long for me to do that. And man, my life really flew off. In fact, I, I've talked about this on my feed. The more the more I was studying the prophets and, this, and, and just the text alone and figuring out that Paul actually contradicted Jesus on everything and that he actually said he was a Pharisee, yada, yada, yada. And I threw out Paul and started reading Peter, the disciples, Peter and John. And when I started doing that, um, anyway, I lost my train of thought. And that's what I have with F and D. I'm so sorry. So um, anyway, the bottom line is talk to him. You can talk to him. You can just sit and say hello. Because what you don't want is for the pearly gates to arrive or Jesus in any way and come to that day and he doesn't know you. He hasn't met you. You haven't talked but what I can guarantee you is that just because it's had a 100% success rate for all of us who not all of us have done it, but for 100% success rate for everyone who's tried talking to the father has had a response. And it's really the reason I think from what I've noticed that the time can be so long is that that's you saying, I'm willing to wait. I'm switching my who I follow. I don't want to follow the father lies anymore. I want to seek truth. I am willing to wait to hear truth. I am willing. And then I see just, I know I change drastically. I know I change drastically. And then I start seeing things differently in my past. I should have died at least four, five or six times. And then I don't think anything I'm doing is a surprise anymore. Uh, like my mother wanted to name me a, one name um, that had its own history. And instead, when I was born, she didn't like it. She didn't like it on me. She didn't like me. And she would constantly tell me about that. So instead, in frustration, she just named me Catherine. She thought it'd be harder and more difficult on me. And instead, I looked up Catherine the other day and I was like, <laughs> you know, it's, so me and I was like, hmm, you know, my mother is known to have a strong will. You you start seeing him like names matter. That's one thing we've learned in the Gospels and the scriptures. So anyway, the bottom line is talk to him. And I can only speak to my experience because I feel like I'd be seriously invading on my friend's experience. If I told you like the things that were said um, but we've all been radically changed. Well, most of us have been radically changed. Some of us were already knew how to talk to him and never said anything. And then you read Peter and it says, just let others go on their way. And then when they ask you what's different, and I guess you clicked on this video because you're asking me what's different. Like why? Gosh, darn it. I don't even have this on. I have you on a tilt. I'm so sorry. <laughs> So anyway, that my recommendation is when the end comes, we are resting in the fact I am so I'm not worried. I'm not scared. I'm looking forward to it because I just have to talk to him from a distance and I don't want to do that anymore. It was so great to have a father again. It was so great to learn what a father was. It's so great to learn what love was outside of human love. My husband is amazing. My friends are amazing. But that's what I was saying. What we learned as I was going through the prophets and scriptures is that all of us who were successful or had done well or who were happier in life had actually followed principles that were already there in all the scriptures. You know, like we left our father and mothers and we just blossomed. We were able to buy our own home and we were able to do all these things. And our, our friendship circle boomed in people who were more like us and who were healthier, much, much healthier. And and then we found out, oh, Genesis says, leave your father and mother. We had no idea. Everything in the father of lies stuff is always saying, you know, stick with your family. If you notice, even the Bible stories, I was watching some Christian thing to see what was out there. It's some of it's just hysterical. And I was watching some movie. It was the first time I watched a Christian movie today. 
I think, it, yeah, today or last night I started watching it and today and I noticed that they were like, and she loved God and her family. And every time they mention God, they mention family when it goes directly against what Genesis says. Um, so there are just all these even money principles and things like that. It was very interesting to see that us who thought that we were way off the grid and way different were actually it's like think about truth seekers we're actually living according to what these texts said that no one listens to that you can't find anything out there i mean you try and look up seven thousand years and you can't even find that thutmose the second was the pharaoh despite him having boils all over his body you won't even find anyone saying that thutmose the second was was the pharaoh of exodus Despite his son dying before him, despite his whole court having, you know, pustules and things all over, despite them having horrible things to say about his reign, and despite his next, his wife, who's there and watched it all, suddenly treating slaves really differently and being praised for her new type of rule so that Egypt became more prosperous than ever. Yeah. You know, like, they leave all that out. It's pretty obvious. And then no one has that. I can't find a single blog that says that Thetmose the second. It's so hidden. Everything's so hidden. It's very difficult to find. It was a joy to find EnochCalendar.com. But even them, knowing the Enoch Calendar, didn't know we were at 7,000 years. It's very difficult. And so I just wanted to share what we do and what has worked for us and why I'm looking forward to the end. Because I get to be closer to my father, my you know, I don't know. I'm very, I very, I, I learned that like fear not is the number one thing in the Bible. The biggest verse. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. I'm, I'm in wonder. And so that's why I, that's why I have these photos here. It says the stars were to help guide us and help lead us and the sun, especially more than anything else. But sometimes when I'm trying to clear my mind, there isn't really anything on this earth. There's everything's polluted or everything. It's hard to see the sky. So sometimes I look at the Hubble telescope and that's what I put in my mind when I try to quiet my mind and hear him. And I'm getting better and better at it. But that's basically it. Everything that I've seen that Jesus says and all the things is, you know, will you, will you know him? Have you ever had a talk with him? Have you ever actually started up a relationship with him? It's up to us because we're the ones who chose to leave, if that makes sense. So I do have a Messiah series. Gosh, I haven't done a film for it in a long time, but it goes over all of the comparing all the mythologies and why Christianity was so different, why it's, uh, kind of blotted out today. Uh, there's a lot out there that's been mistaken as Christianity when, like, Paul created this whole church when Paul was actually a false teacher um, and only chosen because a Roman emperor created this thing called the Bible, which cuts out a ton of the prophets. A ton of the prophets and some of the texts have been changed. The Dead Sea Scrolls helped, but they didn't make any of those public. They're all, like, private auction now, which has been, there's so much effort as kings have always done, to control information. So if you watch, um, like, the Archco volume, like, they found so many letters around that time in the, ni- in the late 1800s when they were doing a ton of archaeology in Rome and Egypt in the old ancient Roman Empire. They were finding letters from a ton of different officials, and they call all of those legitimate except the ones that proved that Jesus was around because he's all recorded in Pontius Pilate, in Caiaphas, in every single, even one guy, uh, it was his job to go around and check on birds or something. or, And he even has interviews with Mary and Joseph in there on official business. And they say, oh, no, no, that's a fake. You know, it's so funny. Even they, some people say the Bible's a fake. And I remember learning in college at UCLA, I remember learning, very clearly learning that the copy of Plato, some of Plato and Socrates' works, they only have one copy of it. But the Bible has like 10,000 copies of all the scriptures because they were copied and copied so often. And it's still like people, and I'm like, it's just, if you don't want it to be true, you know, and so I understand why it's the number one persecuted and people really, really want to have control over their own fate. And that's fine. But if you are interested in, you know, being prepared for the end that you see coming around you, this is every the summation of my last 
two years of research and the culmination of, you know, my incredibly terrific history that has turned into, I would say, a very good thing. I have rolled over in accidents. I have been put through windows. I have lost my legs, lost the ability, so much mobility that I could barely lift my chin off my pillow. Um, horrible stroke, horrible tremor, violent spring 90 times a day, numerous times a week. And now I'm like, I can choose. It's just a whole different life. I have a YouTube channel. I have you guys. Uh, my close circle has grown. I have an incredible team of doctors. I've been diagnosed. I am incredibly, incredibly lucky. It, and I can see, I don't know. Like I said before, we always give them crap when something goes wrong. But we chose that. We had the Garden of Eden where everything went right. And we chose to leave it. We said we wanted something different. And so we have something different. So we're very lucky that we can actually talk with him. So that's my two cents on it. So that's why I feel prepared. Most of my friends feel prepared. Some of them are changing some things, definitely changing some things up um, as we study the end. But I guess that's just it. So all I can recommend is that you sit down, make sure no one's going to interrupt you, put your plane, air phone on airplane mode, go out into a park if you want to. COVID has a ton of park opportunities now. And just be quiet and say hello. Say just seriously. All of us ended up just saying hello, hello, and then we just wait. So I, I did get some feedback on Wednesday. Some people did some stuff to like go out and be there when the Pogloops came. If it came on Wednesday, like the earthquake charts were showing us. And like one guy got washed away. Did I tell you guys what I did on Twitter? Whatever. The river came. And, but they were like, they were like, all right, fine if you're out there. And unfortunately, they were standing in the middle of a river. So I've never heard of that. I, I'm not really up on the stories of like, um, none of us had that happen. But then again... All of us had been reading the same stuff that you and I have, and I don't know, none of us were really belligerent when we did it. You can be belligerent. That's the one thing, is that uh, all of us are, you would call us heathens if you knew us. <laughs> we aren't the cleanest of people. We're not clean. So, if for, according to a lot of, we're not religious. We don't attend church. None of, none of us do, and yet we... I get to talk to the Almighty. I don't want to speak for... I get to talk to the Almighty Yahweh. And the more I talk to him, the more my life resembles the ancient Bible stories. It's very difficult doing what he says. If he asks us to do something, it's never what you expect. But the more you do it, the more you become... Like, that's, you know... The more you become whole. Because it's your maker. And believe me, you don't know how you're made. You've just been fathered by the deceiver so far. Anyway, I love you so much. And uh, for any of you who think that you're not clean enough, you should read into that story about Zacchaeus. And also read the story about the prostitute. There is so much evidence in these texts that, like some people are like, oh, the chosen people, the chosen people, the Jewish are the chosen people, and God speaks to them. And I'm like, no, 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 there are Gentiles all through the lineage of Christ. There's like four Gentile women. And not all of them have the best histories. You know what I mean? Some sacrificed humans to, to gods, they say. Like, it's, it's very purposeful, it seems like. I thought there were only three. But that seems very purposeful to me of like, no, no, no. In the lineage of Christ, who's going to save you? There are going to be people from outside who believe other things. So if you've obeyed the natural law throughout your life and tried to do what's right instead of trying to fight what's right. Um, and I think that comes out basically treating others. I think the natural law in, you know, oh, actually I read it just today in scripture in one of the gospels. It said, treat others as you want to be treated. Boom. That's about the natural law altogether. Treat others as you would treat yourself. You know, we all have to live on this planet. So all right, so if you're one of those people, you're probably going to have a good time talking to the Almighty. 
So I'll see you guys next time. I'll try to do slides on the next ones, but I knew this one was really important. All right. Hope that helps you prepare for what's coming. Mwah. Love you. Bye.